Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching today. So this week I have some lovely things to share with you. I know it's a little bit later than the usual Thursday video, but this was arriving today, which is Saturday. So I've done a very quick little video to get this put up today. And then I've got something else arriving, which will then go into next week's What Did I Get? So let's start with these bits here. So this is some embossing folders that I picked up from the charity shop. It's that charity shop, you know, the one that I always get some really good finds, <laughs> especially craft related pieces. So I picked up these and the reason I love these ones so much is they're five by seven and that's one of my favorite size cards to do. But most of my embossing folders are six by six, which is also another style I like, but they're then the, the smaller A6 size. And I just don't really make cards that size. So these were a pound each. Got the music notes, so I thought that's gonna be great. It has got the Day of the Dead, it must have been part of that collection, but you can use music notes for, for anything. So that's really handy. That's a lovely snow scene there, so perfect for any winter cards. Um, and obviously then for your Christmas ones as well. And then this one's my favorite and it's the Christmas lights festive embossing folder. So I'm gonna be using that in the backgrounds of some of this year's cards. So I think that'll look really, really nice. So that was just a little kind of charity find. So they were a pound each. And then this is my Papercraft Essentials magazine. So this is the issue 178. So I feature in this a couple of times and I've had some lovely emails from you saying that you, you enjoyed reading my article. So there is a little bit in here. Um, it's the Meet the Maker, just here. So there's me, there's a little portion of my craft room just to give you a little insight. And then I just got asked all these questions and uh, yeah, it was just really nice to, I guess, share a little bit more about me. Those of you that have been following me a long time probably know everything there anyway, but uh, anybody knew, I just thought that was quite nice. And then just before that is my basic Christmas cracker tutorial really lovely one this is a go-to this is something i've made for years you know you learn this in kind of school almost as well it's just such a lovely one to to know once you've got it you kind of use it forever but it was using that beautiful paper boutique pad that i shared a while back so yeah they were really fun to make so i enjoyed that a lot so that's the papercraft essentials issue 178 but the great thing about it also is that you get this lovely kit and it makes five no eight sorry i haven't done them all yet it makes eight of these little pop-up cards can you see them they're all 3d you get the foam and you get all these kind of it's like a decoupage well it is decoupage and then on the back you've got room to write your message there they are lovely, like I said, they are smaller than what I usually do, but that's just my preference, but you get all the envelopes for them as well. And you just follow each page, it's all numbered, 1B, 2B, you can't go wrong with it, and they give you all the instructions. And the inspiration's really nice as well, because if you don't want to make the 3D card, you can, so these are the cards here, really, really lovely. So the one I've done is this one so far, but these are the other ones to do. Um, but you can also, Nikki in here has done really lovely, let me just find the cards that she's done. She always creates beautiful cards. Here we go. And that's using all parts of the elements and cutting this out, you know, as a single piece and putting it onto the card itself. Still having that decoupage elements, you've still got the foam, but I think they're really, really lovely. So I probably won't do all eight in that style and I will do some of them you know in this in this way but you do have lots of bits left over as well so yeah we'll definitely um get those all done and sometimes things like this is what i will then make a nice little gift bag for and then i'll put it in for like a, a raffle christmas raffle um, and things like that it's always nice so I get the joy of making it and then someone else gets the joy of giving it out so yeah that's what you get there tons of it you can see all the pages absolutely loads so they always do good kits you can't fault papercraft essentials for that kind of thing they are um, very good and I think where did I see the new one that's coming out or it's already I think it's out soon anyway You'll see me with that one because I will be getting it, no doubt. Okay, then I picked up some more of my Kalau glue. This is my solvent-based glue that I've just fallen in love with over the last few months. Really enjoy using it. It's usually always around £11 for three. I've never found it any cheaper. So if there is anywhere, let me know. But this is the one that I like. But I don't know if I'm right, so do pop in the comments. Um, I don't know if this is available in the US or it's allowed to be shipped to the US because it's a solvent glue. So does anybody know if that is the case? Or maybe you have it in the US, but it can't be delivered to the US? I don't know, I don't know how it works, but someone definitely put, oh, I can't, we can't have this glue 
because it's solvent. And that wasn't, I didn't see that here. It was on um, one of the forums that I read. Um, but no one really seemed to then reply to it. So I'm just curious if that is the case because, um, I mean, I could understand if it is. But yeah, I was just found that quite interesting. So that's my glue there. Then I got these. Now I have a large, I've, I've treated myself to something very nice from Creating Craft. And they do the FlexiPay. And they said if you click on these, these were $8.99, it was buy one get one free, so I've got 12 of the runners, there's 10 metres on each, so there's a lot There's a lot here. And they are very sticky, so I'll give them that, because I've never used them before, but I have got one on the go and it is, a, it is actually quite good. Um, but if you put these on, these are on four flexies, so basically you pay a little bit off for four months, but if you add it into your total basket and your whole order can go over four flexies. So that's what I've done. So I have a larger part of this but they send it all in different parts and it's taken an age for it to arrive so that part what this is part of will come next week so um, any guesses to what it might be that I've ordered okay and then finally I got a lovely package from Craft Stash again I always like to say I am part of their affiliate program and I do collaborate with them regularly now which is great so I got to choose some wonderful products so this was all in my wish list this is stuff that I genuinely want and it's what I've chose which is why I love working with them so you would have remembered last week I shared these ones so these are the John Next Door dies these are the plates this is the Christmas collection is those three and then you have the additions dice you've got the poppy and the orchid yeah that's the orchid one isn't it again I think I did say last week they don't oh yeah orchid it is there sorry they do say what they are blousy bluesy poppy I've just realised that now. Christmas Elements Plate, Ivy Dye Plate, and the Christmas Rose Dye Plate. So apologies, didn't see that, it's hidden. So those were the ones I got, that were all the dyes, but then I thought, actually, I need some really nice holly. So I picked up this plate here, and I thought, do you know what, I'm going to get the matching stamp, because it'll be nice to have some stamped images and not have to always die cut everything, because you could stamp them in the, in the background and then have them die cut in the foreground, so it just makes the card look really full. And then again, it's a lovely plate, so it cuts all them out in one go, and those will sit perfectly over your stamped image. So you can literally stamp that because that's one big plate. It is nice and easy. They, they really have done, you know, thought about this. You've got your triangles here. So you just peel off. And then that whole piece would go onto your acetate block or onto your stamping platform. Stamp it all out. And then you would just line up your die perfectly over the top there. And you can see in it, cut them all out. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces in one go. I mean, that's enough for one card straight away. So you're not having to run your die through all of the time. A few people have said to me, remember you've got your Cricut Sam? Yes, I do. I actually use it for more, I guess, 3D kind of makes as opposed to actual doing little things like this, if that makes sense. Um, plus I'm still someone that likes the finish of a die rather than a machine cut. I like that, you know, the, the rounded edge that you get. So, um, yeah. But my Cricut gets used a lot. So um, I have actually got some nice projects coming up with the Cricut. So, it, like I said, it does get used. But I also use it for, pri not private work, but like my dad likes it for things that he does. So he asks me to do things on it. And, um, and I've done a few commissions on it. And my friend wanted a massive label for her daughter's bike. And I've done that on there. So it does get used a lot. Okay, so that's that now. So it's not the whole collection of John Next Door, but it is a nice chunk of it. And I'm, again, really looking forward to it. I've already started using this. This ivy is getting used on a really lovely 3D Christmas project that will be part of the Christmas workshop this year. So, yeah, everything will get used. Then we will do the paper discovery in a moment. So I'm going to talk about that in a bit more detail. But these, OMG. So... These here, I have always loved the videos that Jennifer Maguire does when she does her embroidery. She loves doing embroidery on cards. And I believe that it was either Waffle Flower or there was another American brand that she uses that do these embroidery dies. And I was looking through Craft Stash and I was looking through their branded section and right on the very end, it was like page eight or something, they have these awesome, very large embroidery dies 
and I said to Laura at head office, why are these so hidden? I honestly think these would do really, really well. So I am so excited to have them and show you, hopefully, if you haven't seen this kind of style die before, some amazing ways that you can create absolutely stunning cards, especially if you're an, someone who enjoys embroidery or you have a friend who loves embroidery. This is gonna look wicked. And even if they don't, it's a lovely textured card to send somebody. Sorry, you got the circle one. And these will cut all these holes and you literally, with your embroidery thread, will, you know, just treat it as a normal, you know, embroidery project. So I have ordered, I already have quite a lot of embroidery threads and I think I shared them some months ago. I absolutely got tons from the charity shop. They were a bargain. But there's a few really bright colours I would like, so I've ordered those because I want to do a beautiful rainbow kind of theme. But I've got the circles this heart one, I mean that's going to look lovely on white cardstock and then red embroidery ribbon and then just love in the middle or something, beautiful for a um, Valentine's card but also the size of that heart, that's going to make a lovely card on its own because it has the outer cutting line so that will cut that whole heart image out. So yeah, that's going to look really, really nice. And you can make these beautiful shaker cards because you've got the aperture in the middle. You put some acetate over that. They're going to look awesome. This one here, just thought, and again, beautiful. It's going to be a lovely card shape on its own. Got the oval, the squares. That's a six by six. I'm pretty sure of it. Or five and three quarters, which is even better. So that's going to, you're going to have a perfect quarter inch frame around your six by six card with that set inside. And you can have all these other layers in, as well. So am I getting across the excitement that I have for these? Because they are, I think, brilliant. And I think they need to be shown off more. And um, people need to know because I never even saw these kind of go up. So I don't know whether it was just kind of they've been up there for yonks and I've missed something maybe <laughs> years ago, months and months ago. I don't know. But these are going to get used pretty quickly. So I would I think I'm going to bump up, bump up a video and kind of move a few more around so I can get something put up quickly so you can see just how lovely these look. And hopefully my threads will arrive very soon. Then I picked up another Paper Boutique. So many of you are loving this. I'm so pleased that I've been able to introduce quite a lot of you to the Paper Boutique because they are just wonderful. And the, the images are always really, really nice. But as you know, I love nautical, anything nautical really. I live very close to the sea and I make a lot of nautical cards for my dad and for his friends and for my mum and her friends. And my dad does water sports. So they're always the kind of cards that get used within our family. But it's very hard to ever find a feminine nautical kind of theme. Everything is very blue, white and red and it has your sailor and that lovely stamp, sh um, stamp set that I shared not too long ago. And then I saw this one here and this is called Ocean Breeze and it just has beautiful florals with then your nautical kind of elements. So you have the lighthouse, you have your anchor, you have like the seagull or the gull kind of feathers mixed in with the blooms. The lovely flowers there on the bottom of that anchor. It's a real soft blue as well as opposed to a harder harder blue. Look at these elements here. Look at that beautiful whale image and you, again you've got the gull. You've got this lovely trim here so you can just cut straight down there, pop that on the side of a, a 5 by 7 card base and it's going to look so fresh. If you do all this against a real nice white card base they're going to look so so lovely. Um, so this one here is the element pad. So I did get the paper kit. I always love to get the kit because you get the toppers and then you get the element pad, but you also get the paper pad as well, which will have a lot of the plain, more background kind of papers. Um, so this one here, all easy, very, very easy to cut out. And then you just would mat and layer them onto, they would look lovely actually. I would use, if you're going to use a mirrored cardstock with this, I'd go for silver. I think silver and white as your kind of basics as a background for these will look so, so lovely. Um, so yeah, and then it repeats again. Oh, and that one's lovely. Just an overview of all the different papers. You could use that as a whole, or you could cut all the strips, and you could do, with this one, you could do the herringbone technique that I love to do with the cards with all the strips. That would look lovely. I might do that, actually. And then that repeats again. And then let me show you the kit. So here you have your toppers at the back. So I got hooked on this with that lovely forest one with the little critters, you know, the um, the fox and the owl and the deer. That's what got me kind of hooked to Paper Boutique. So these are the toppers. So you get circles and you get squares. So again, you get the lovely girl. It's a day to celebrate you and sending, and sending you birthday wishes. 
So it's perfect for birthdays. So, you know, they're there, they're ready to go. So you've either got very, very quick cards that you can make with your topper and your backgrounds, or you can pull out little bits and elements. And on that sailor card that I done, I had that lovely anchor that I die cut in the silver with the rope behind. It's that anchor's gonna work great with this paper and the, the gull that I used on that as well in white, that's gonna look lovely with this. And then here you've got for a wonderful friend, thinking of you on your special day. So again, lovely for a wedding card if someone's getting married on the beach or by the sea. Love this one, I just think he's such a lovely looking whale and that lighthouse is just beautiful. And again, I think they repeat, yeah. And then the, the papers here, again, absolutely beautiful. So you have this wonderful just floral print and you get this one here. This one I think is one of my favourite ones. I really like that one. I just think it's so pretty. And then there's the anchor. And then you've got a nice striped one there. And then look at that one where you've got the beautiful boat. That lovely gull just flying in there. I just like that they've incorporated the feathers in amongst the flowers there. I think that's a really nice touch. And then it repeats again. So yeah, the other good thing about these, and a lot of you have said that, is the value for money. They're really good value for money and the quality's beautiful. So um, always eight by eight, which I don't mind at all. And then as always, on the very back, they show you everything. So I have got the embellishment pad and the kit. So they're the two I've got, but you also get a, this one here is your insert collection. So these would be pieces that you would put possibly inside the card or as extras. Then that's the, just your color pad. So these are all the color tones that they've put to go with this collection. And then this one here is your decorative papers. So, but that's right, sorry, the kit comes with the decorative papers. So yeah. Yeah, if you didn't want the toppers, you can buy this basically on its own. But I always like to get it with the toppers. So yeah, that's that one. So I hope, yeah, I hope you agree and think that one is gorgeous. I think it's absolutely lovely. And then, oh, I was so happy to see that they'd done an A4 for the love of stamps. They have got others as well, but this one just, I was like, oh, it's so good. And this is called Snow Much Fun and it's the Edget stamps so the idea is is for example let me take the plastic off so if i show you the backs it's a bit easier but these here so this one and this one i guess well they're, they're probably all intended but certainly this the one and this one you will stamp them on the outer side of your card especially a five by seven so i've just got a five by seven one here they're beautiful photopolymer stamps they're lovely and sticky take that one off and then I would have him down there and I would stamp him like so and then when you get to the top here you could leave that empty but I would probably just slightly cut around there and then kind of cut it off to join the top and then you have that really fun edged scene here of them all trying to put up the the Christmas decorations there the little penguins and then you have these really nice sentiments you've got have a jolly Christmas to a dear friend happiness is fairy light so that's the one that would go with that um, hope your Christmas is snow much fun and I just think they're lovely as always the hunky dory for the lover stamps stamps are always beautiful images but they don't have a heck of a lot of detail so it allows you to be able to do your coloring and really just show that color off so that's that one and then I just thought that lovely big father Christmas would look great as a tag as well such a lovely size but you can see him on that card that's why it works so well on a five by seven so if you are someone that prefers smaller stamps um, smaller making smaller cards these stamps will probably be end up being too big so um, I mean he would probably just work on a four by six just but he would literally take up everything and again with those as well probably get away with these ones more so um, but I would certainly say they are more for the large card and hunky dory do make large cards so that's probably why they're like this as well but aren't they lovely do you like them please let me know in the comments below and I love that you have all the little extras as well just to create because those I would stamp a few times color them and then fussy cut them and kind of do like a decoupage stick them with foam all around these guys I think it's going to look 
really, really cute. So I look forward to making that one. And then I am so excited to receive these wonderful dies from the latest release by Paper Discovery. So basically I, I shared this, well, it would have been yesterday actually. Um, they released it on Tuesday, I think it was, and she'd done a huge giveaway. Um, th over 300 pounds worth was given away on Craft Stash website of this new release. Um, and it's just really, really clever what she's done and how it all kind of comes together. So let me talk you through what I've got and how, or what the idea is behind it all. So this one here is a bundle. This is a, I think on a five by, I mean, the actual, there's six, oh, six by eight. Yeah, six by eight. So it's a really great size and you get all of the dies to match. Now the nice thing about this is they're just great, obviously, images as they are, but within the die set, so these are the dies, it's a great big packaging and you get this, but they are nice sized dies. All of these will cut every single one of these. So there's our cookie, sorry, snowflake. I was looking at the cookie as I was doing that one. The little house, which I really like. You've got the stocking. You've got the other snowflake there. And you've got our gingerbread cookie and the Christmas tree. I have a lovely card idea with these that one and then we've got our kind of candy cane but then you get this one here so you can have them all as single pieces but if you die cut this and fold it in half it will make all of these little tags so you can just put some ribbon or some twine through there and then you can hang them so I just thought that was a really nice way to just really change them up so yeah looking forward to using them and then you've got all these extra little pieces here have a sweet Christmas sugar spice and everything nice and naughty or nice okay the next one that I love is this one here so this is a great big embossing folder of a room so can you see all the wallpaper it's a it's like an old Georgian style kind of house you have beautiful floorboards that lovely like almost William Morris style wallpaper and then that lovely wood effect on the wall so you will die cut sorry you will so you will emboss this and you can distress it and do lots of wonderful things but then you get this here, so this is your dies, and the scene that she created with this was just wonderful, and, uh, and I'd already requested to have this sent to me, and it, from watching her video, I thought, I'm so pleased I've asked for this, because it's just lovely. If you're somebody that loves creating scenes and die cutting and adding all that detail, you're gonna really enjoy this collection, because it does exactly that. So this is called the Elegant Room Builder Die Set. You get 20 dies in here, and they're really nice, again, sizes, but it's, it's all her attention to detail that I really like, so, the idea that I've got and the way that I'm going to use this, because you know I always like to just push things a little bit outside the box and do something a bit different. I think you're going to really like the way I'm going to do all of this. This is the tree. Look how big. Look how, you can see even by me laying that down, how this is going to start to create a beautiful scene. So that's your Christmas tree, but you don't have to have this. You can have this and create beautiful, I'm sure there's many of you out there that have lovely backgrounds and you can, you know, do your tree as you want because I've just thought actually with that lovely Sheena one here, you could do that like as the back of, like looking through a window and then have this Christmas tree, you know, in the front here like inside the house and you look out the window and you see that outside or something, you know? So there's ways to incorporate them differently, but then you get this lovely, so this is your sofa. Then you get your frame for like framing the cushion, the back kind of pillow, pillow and then you get the detail to go on that again. So that creates your base and the back there. So that's the sofa. And again, just look how lovely and big that is. And you could put everything in it will look quite full and you'll start to lose the whole of the background, but you certainly can work it in. Olga actually cut the sofa kind of like in half and had it set off to the side there. Okay, so that's those pieces. Then you get your photo or picture frame. So this would hang on the wall. And then you get your presents. So there's the frame and then there's all the detail of the presents. So again, you imagine that in front of the Christmas tree. This is your carpet or rug. So you'd have that and then here these are the ones I love you have a little dog so he's curled up and you have a little cat so you could have the dog curled up on the carpet and then you can have the cat on the sofa and then she's even done a cushion so you have the yeah so there is the frame of the cushion and that's the detail of the cushion that could go on there that almost also I don't know could look like an orange 
like slice, possibly. I have to see. But that you imagine then behind the you know the cat. I'm really not probably showing it very well there. Then you have your side table, so you could then have that there. You have your vase. You have flowers to go in your vase, so you just set them behind. Then you have your little shelf with your books and your clock, so you could have that up there. You have Merry Christmas, which fits perfectly inside the picture frame. And then you have your decorations for your Christmas tree. So here we have your stocking. So you could either have the stocking hanging from the little shelf or have a few of them on the tree. But they also have these, this die here has three smaller dies, which are baubles and things to go on the tree. So they would all go over the tree itself. And then the last one here, ah, there we go. I was trying to work out what they are. They are the cushions to go either side of the sofa. You can see them there. So with these things here, you can die cut them in many different colors. So die cut that multiple times and then paper piece it together, or you can die cut it in one. And then what Olga tends to do is she then puts the die actually over the die cut and uses a blending brush and actually puts colour directly onto the metal die and the colour will just go through the gaps and then give you a lovely stenciled coloured kind of die cut. So yeah you get so many wonderful pieces but the great thing about this is you don't have to use it just for Christmas. If you remove the Christmas tree you can even keep the presents because if you die cut them in like blues or pinks and stuff they'll work for birthdays so you could use them on other cards but I would say if you remove them and the Merry Christmas all of that is something you can use all year round. So this would make a lovely new home card. You know, you could just do it as a lovely happy birthday card. You can see how you can then have your little dog down there again on the rug, the flowers, the frame, have the bookcase up there. And there's the vase. So I hope you're able to kind of get a feel of what I'm trying to get across there. It is a really, really nice die set. Like I say, you get so much to this. And it's nice that it's not just something that you're stuck with for Christmas. You can pull elements of this out all year round. Okay, and then we move on to the door. And this was another favourite. Also, you get this stamp set, which coordinates with the whole collection. So she added this stamp here inside the card of that room one here. Because you can see it's basically that image. Um, but done it in a very, very light, almost like a watermark. So it was just a nice little touch on, you know, tying everything together, like touching on the actual front cover. You could even put that on the envelope towards like one side, you know, to the, the right hand side of the envelope. I think that would look really nice. And then you've got all these bits, you've got like the cracks there. You've got more Christmas lights, this fence. You've got, this is your stained glass um, windows which work within the stained glass doors. So let's go on to this because then you'll be able to see how all of this incorporates because these here fit within the frames of this. Um, it really, Like I said, she's really thought about everything here. It's lovely. So this I'm excited to use. So this is going to be some of my Christmas cards this year. And this is this is basically your card shape. So it's a the, the whole door is the card shape. So it's about five by seven, if I remember. So that's four, about four and a half. Yeah, by seven. So you'll have, yeah, it's just slightly narrower. So again, this one here, you get lots of pieces. I'm going to transfer all this over onto my magnetic sheets and I'll make my labels and number how many dies there are just so I know I'm never going to lose any. So there is your main one. Okay, so you would die cut that through a folded card. So again, here's my five by seven. So what I would do is I would lay it down on here. Actually, that must be a bit more taller than seven, so I'd have to make that myself. So I'm going to have to cut it a little bit taller. But I would not have that left cutting line on the card. I would shift it off so it's actually come right off. So you keep that fold intact, so it will end up cutting and bring it down along the bottom because you don't want to cut there. So all it's going to actually cut is all of this side and all the way, imagine it's taller, all the way around to here. So when you remove it, you will then have your card as this shape here. Okay, I'm going to do this in a tutorial so you will see this. Then you have all these parts here. So if I just keep that in shot, so then you have this one, okay, which is this shape here. So that would then go on top. And then you have, you start to then bring in the detail. So this is then this piece that will go onto that. And then you have these pieces here, which will go onto the top there. Love this. I mean, that could be used on so many other projects and this is going to look great again on another 3D project that I have lined up. 
How lovely is that? Um, just it's such a lovely size. It's a beautiful die. Um, so you do that and then with these parts here, this stamp here fits inside and you colour it and it will look like real stained glass. These ones here, you stamp and they will go in here, again looking like real stained glass. And then if you do have a bigger scene behind it, you can then start to create the brick wall, you can add in the fence. So there is, again, lots to add to it. But the other nice thing is, look at these lovely planters that go outside with a Christmas tree on top. So she's got, I think this was the, yeah, this was like the stem of the Christmas tree, I believe. I'd have to look back, but it's something like that. You do two of those, have them either side of the door. In fact, and that will then widen the card more to a five by seven. Well, it's slightly, I think it's about seven and a quarter by the looks of it. And then you have look, the little handle for the door. So if you die cut that in like a, a metal, um, a, a mirrored cardstock, a silver or a gold, that will make it look like it's real metal. So you have that, so that would say, probably put it about there. Then you have these here, which are your knockers. Or is that the knock? No, sorry, that's the knocker. There we go. So you put the knocker in the middle, okay, like so. Then you have these here, which must be more flowers. So I think you have the option to have a Christmas tree, or you can just have flowers, and then that would make it a nice new home card again, so you can use this. So literally, you just take that out, and it, it's, it's not Christmassy at all. But she did also add a Christmas wreath, and that must have come, ah, I think the wreath comes from another, because there, I haven't got the whole collection, because I think there was two that I didn't feel I was going to use so much. There's a, it's really lovely, but it's one with a teapot or a kettle and a cup, and it's like co warm and cosy for Christmas, that kind of thing. I just didn't think that was going to be one I was really going to use so much, but do check out all the links as always are below, um, because there might well be others, but she put a wreath there, but I'm sure I'll be able to do something. Um, and that's more, yeah, that must layer up. So it's like a decoupage, I think. That's, there is, looks like your keyhole. So again, that would go, I'm just guessing for the minute, somewhere around here, because that's your keyhole. And then these little swirls, I think, go on the tree. I'm just looking on the picture here. Oh, that's the handle. That's your actual handle which goes on the bottom of this kind of plate. So it would go like that. You can see here. Okay, so that's your handle. But these little swells, they're, they're by the tree in this, so I'm imagining that's what they are for. And then look, you put that next to it. Bring this over a little bit. How lovely. It's gonna look amazing. So yeah, do the stamp is, you, again, you don't have to have the stamp because another nice thing that you can do is just add acetate behind this. And um, yeah, again, I have another really, really fun tutorial that now I have this to go with it. I think it's going to work really well and I think you're going to love it. And I think those are the ones that I need to kind of get out a bit earlier because, yeah, I think some of you are going to want a little bit of time to spend creating them if you do decide to. So, yeah, let me just tidy all this away. But it's so nice to have these kind of pieces sometimes because even like that little, you know, the, the door handle there, that's something that I can use on so many of my other projects, even down to like the shed when I made the she shed that little handle would look really nice. And it's those tiny fine details that I really like. So it's good to build up these kind of dies where they have all these bits and pieces because you don't always have to use them. And again, I know mine was a she shed, but a lot of people made houses, but you could have that outside the house and it would have looked really, really cool. So, and then you have this here and these all work together. And on the back, she says, look, coordinates with this embossing folder and this one here so you can also emboss your images and mix them in with this you don't just have to have it just with the dies so here is the georgian door and this is the elegant door okay so you've got two very different styles so if you um actually i've just realized i have the the wreath so this is the wreath that she used there's probably some of you going sam the wreath's on the other one i haven't got to it yet so here so this is your window tag additions die set coordinates with and it's got the stamp set and this one here which is the tag builder now that's the other one i didn't get the window in the pocket die set so have a little look because there's loads to it okay and then with this one here you get look at that that beautiful curtain so what you could do and what i'm going to try and look at doing is 
you could have that behind this piece, you see? So you could do something with that, but I'm gonna try and do it so that this will actually physically really open and reveal this, and then maybe have the Christmas tree behind there. It's just, there's so many possibilities. I'm just trying to get through, uh, you know, share as many of them with you guys so you really can get, you know, as much out of this as possible. You have these drapes, so you could put that over there. It sits perfectly or behind. I'll probably have it in front. This here is another drape, so you could do these on the embossing folder of this piece here. So you could have these drapes. So you'd have that one in the middle, and you do that one that side, and then another one that side. So you'd have that real big, and you could even probably die cut that, cut it straight up in half, and you could have a bit of it coming off here. So it looks like the curtains. Almost then looks a bit like a theatre set. So that's another great idea. And then we have, this is your windowsill, I believe. I'm just looking at there. So I imagine you could have all like a window seat. Um, and then all these great bits. So there is the um, wreath, which fits perfectly on the front door. Obviously this is <laughs> smaller. Imagine there's the door and the wreath sits lovely in the center there. And then you've got another cap. So he would sit on the window seat. Okay. Um, you've got your candle with your holly, which could go on the table of the side table with that set. And you've got your candle, <laughs> look at the tiny, tiny candle die, which would go on the top of this one here, if you wanted to. Oh, it, there, there is a little candle there, so you probably wouldn't use it for that. You would put it on the, <laughs> this one here. <laughs> um, you would have that there so and then you've got the moons you could have the moon as they're looking out obviously that would be out in the distance up in the sky you've got these bits here I don't know what they are got those tiny bits there I'm gonna have to look up what they are because I don't know you have a bow you have like a little poinsettia that's the candle that I shared yeah and there's the other ones so I am really going to go to town. I am going to enjoy doing this because nearer to Christmas, although I'm going to do these a little bit earlier, but I love going in my craft room with my nice warm cup of tea or hot chocolate, put some music on and just get lost in crafting. Die cut, do all the little fiddly bits and pieces and just I'm going to try and incorporate as much of this as I can into one card. <laughs> Or a couple, but yeah, just make them look really full so that whoever receives it is going, oh my God, look at that, and look at the tiny bit there, and look at that, and you've added glitter there, and God, you've even done that tiny bit. That's what I want to do, because I do have the patience of a saint, so I am able to, yeah, <laughs> spend a lot of time doing that. And then that's those that I'd already touched on, so I'm looking forward to all of this. I, I couldn't wait. As soon as I saw it, I thought, yeah. Definitely. I think, Olga, you've done an amazing job with these. I think they're so, so lovely. Okay, so that is everything for this week. It was probably a good job that the other stuff didn't arrive. Otherwise, this video would be even longer. Um, Christmas projects will, like I say, start a bit earlier this year because I do want to get this used and I'm excited to start creating with it. But I also have other things in the pipeline that I've got to squeeze in as well. So I may well be starting to churn out more videos a week because I've still got a lot banked. So I'm just going to kind of throw them at you. But hopefully you'll like that anyway. So until tomorrow, because I have my... No, it's not going to be the last. It was going to be the last. I think my series, this kind of stamping focus series, is going to probably go on till Wednesday of next week. And then I'm going to resume with my normal and get some more 3D projects in because I've got quite a few that I want to share. So, yeah, until then, I'll be back tomorrow and I will be back with my other exciting order. I can't wait. Um, and that'll be next Thursday as normal. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. See you later. Bye.